we are going to learn about rectilinear motion. Rectilinear motion is the motion of an object or a particle on a straight path. So let's talk more about this. So in this figure I have here, okay, I have particle here, which is what? This yellow particle that I have here, okay. At first, this particle was at what? Position what? P1, okay. And then later on, it moved towards position what? P2. Okay, so you see that this particle has what? Two different positions, okay. At what? Two different times and also at what? Two different what? Distances from the what? From the origin. Okay, so time here is measured in seconds and then the distance s is measured in what? Meters or what? Feet. Okay. So, distance S1 here, okay, is the length of the path between what? Position 1 and then the origin. That's what S1. And then S2 is the length of the path between what? The origin and then what? Position what? 2. Okay, so the difference between these two distances will give me what? Displacement. Okay, so I subtract distance s1 from what distance s2 that gives what displacement okay or we can see that what the distance between what position one and then what position two of what the particle will be what displacement okay so we have what the displacement okay which will equal to what the difference between what the distance 2 and then distance 1 so that what s2 minus what s1 okay we are doing this because we want to calculate for this distance that we have here okay and that will be what the displacement of what of the particle okay so let's look at something about displacement okay displacement okay one thing about this displacement equation that we have here is that when S2 is greater than what S1, we are going to get to a displacement to be what positive. Okay, and then when S2 is less than what S1, you get to a displacement to, what, to be negative. Okay, so let's keep that in mind. Okay, so what we are going to do is that we are going to what, look at how to calculate for what average velocity of what this particle here and no velocity is what changing distance over what changing time okay and then you know changing distance is what giving us what displacement okay changing distance is what giving us what the displacement and then you have the change in time to be equal to what the final time which is what t to minus what the initial time okay so therefore if you have what velocity in this case will be average velocity Okay, that will equal to what? Change in distance, which is what? S2 minus S1 over change in time, which is what? T2 minus what? T1. Okay, and this will equal to what? Change in distance over what? Change in time. And you know this is what? Displacement. Okay. Alright, so that's the formula for average velocity. Okay, so let's continue. So you know average velocity to be equal to displacement over change in time. Okay, and that's equal to what? S2 minus S1 over T2 minus what? T1. Okay, so this is what? Average velocity. Okay, so what happens is that what? When this change in t here, okay, begins to what, get closer to what, zero, the change in s will also what, start to what, get smaller, okay. So when the change in t here starts to get smaller, change in s will also what, start to what, getting smaller. Let's look at what that means. So you see that change in t is the distance between what, position one and then position two, right? So the more the distance between position one and then position two increases, then what change in t what 
we got increasing right and then you see that changing s was what increase but when the change in t between position one and position two start to decrease then you see that change in s also what decreases so when this happens then you will be getting what instantaneous what velocity okay so you have instantaneous velocity to be the limit as change in t approaches zero okay for well, s2 minus s1 right by t2 minus what t1 and this will be quite what the limit as change in t approaches what zero okay for for displacement over what changing time okay and this will give us what the s over what the t which is what changing displacement with what respect to what time so this will be what instantaneous what velocity so you have instantaneous velocity to be equal to what the s over what the t which is what the velocity of the particle what at a specific or what, at a particular time okay this is what instantaneous instantaneous velocity okay which is the velocity of the particle at a particular time so the t approaching zero here means what the change in t what is becoming smaller okay is becoming smaller and that that will also cause what the change in s what to become smaller and then that will be that will make us what uh complete for the instantaneous what velocity which is the velocity of the particle what, at a particular time okay so now to know what velocity is let's look at what acceleration 2 is okay so now let's look at this figure that i have here okay so providing that the velocity of the particle is known at what two points okay which is what this position one and then position two okay and then we know the the time at what position one to both t1 and then the time at what position two to both t2 then what the acceleration of the particle which is what average acceleration will be equal to the change in the velocity which is what v2 minus what v1 over what the change in time which is what t2 minus what t1 okay now we got what changing velocity over what changing time that's what average acceleration okay so let's look at something here if v2 is greater than what v1 then you have what acceleration to be positive and then if v2 is less than what v1 then you have what acceleration what to be negative right because what you are subtracting what v2 so you are subtracting v1 from what v2 okay so if v1 is more than what v2 they are going to get what a positive number about if v1 is bigger than what v2 then you are going to get what a negative number that's what that means and you know time can't be negative okay so the negative the acceleration being negative will be what affected by what the the velocity okay so when v2 is bigger than v1 you get what acceleration to be positive and then when v2 is less than v1 you get what acceleration what to be negative so this is the equation for what average acceleration so let's say at a time what the change in t is what approaching zero okay when change in t is what approaching zero then what change in velocity what also what be getting smaller right so that means what when change in t start to get smaller then what change in velocity what also what start to get smaller and then that will help us what get what instantaneous what acceleration so we therefore have acceleration we got what the limit as well as change in t approaches zero to be v2 minus what v1 over t2 minus what t1 okay and that'll be equal to what the limit as change in t approaches zero for changing v over what changing t and this will be given as 
change in t and this will give us what d v over what dt so this will give us what the formula for what? instantaneous what acceleration which is what the acceleration of the particle at a particular time t okay so this is the formula for finding what instantaneous what acceleration and this one is what average what acceleration okay so earlier on we learned about velocity equals what the s over what the t right so making the t the subject i'm going to cross what multiply so we have what the t v equals what the s then i'll come and divide by what v come and divide by what v so at the end we have what the t to be equal to what the s over what v right but we know acceleration to be equal to the v over what the t okay but the t equals what the s over what the v so we don't have what acceleration to be what the v divided by what the t which is what the s over what v right so that will be equal to what the v times v over the s okay and then that gives us let me continue from here that gives us what acceleration to be equal to what v dv over what ds okay so this is another uh, equation for acceleration okay what you have here is also what acceleration so we see that what, now we know what displacement is we know what velocity is we know what what acceleration is okay so i'm going to use this idea to solve a question okay so let's try our hands on this question the question says that a particle moving along a straight line assumes a position defined by the equation s plus 60 squared minus t cubed, where s is expressed in meters and t in seconds. Determine a the velocity and acceleration of the particle at any time t. B the velocity and acceleration of the particle at time t equals what one second and c time when the particle is at what rest. Okay, so since this the motion of a particle along a straight line. Okay, you know that what we are dealing with what rest linear motion. I you know velocity equals what the derivative of the of the displacement, okay, with respect to what time and then acceleration equals what the derivative of velocity with respect to what time. Okay. So this these are the two equations we are going to use to solve this question. Okay. And then from the question we're giving the equation of position to be s equals what 60 squared minus what t cube okay which is what a function of time so i'm going to use this equation here to find out the velocity and then we use the velocity also to find out the acceleration okay so you know that velocity equals what the s over the t okay so this will be equal to the derivative of the equation of position which is what 60 squared minus t cube with respect to what t okay so when i do this this will give me velocity to be equal to what 12 t minus what 3 t squared okay so that was velocity so the velocity at any time t will be equal to what 12 t minus what 3 t squared okay so let's write this down here 12 t minus 3 t squared okay so now let's find that acceleration at any time t so you know that acceleration equals what the v over the t okay so this will be equal to the derivative of the velocity equation with respect to what t so that what the derivative of 12 t minus 3 t squared with respect to what t okay so this, this will give us acceleration to be equal to 12 minus 6 t so this will be the acceleration at a particular time what t okay so that's the first part of the question so the question says that we should determine the velocity and acceleration of the particle at time t equals what one second so this time around we've been given an actual value for the time okay to calculate for the acceleration and velocity so all we have to do is to substitute the time one second towards the acceleration equation then the velocity equation so at time t equals one second we have velocity to be equal to what? 12 multiplying what 1 minus 3 multiplying 1 
square. Okay, this is what we will have. Okay, so this will give me b to the equal to 12 minus what? 3. And that will give us what? 3 to the equal to what? 9 meters per what? second. Okay, so that will be the velocity at a certain time what? 1 second. So now I'm going to find the acceleration what? At time 1 second. So you have acceleration to be 12 minus what? 60. So when time is what? 1 second, you have acceleration to be equal to what? 12 minus 6 multiplied by 1. So this will give us acceleration to be equal to 12 minus 6, and that will be equal to 6 meters per second squared. So that will be the acceleration at time t equals what? 1 second. Okay, so now let's look at the last part of the question, which is that we should determine the time when the particle is at rest. When a particle is at rest, that means what? It didn't move at all. Okay, so that means when we measure the initial distance and then the final distance, you get the same value since it didn't move at all. So in that case, we have a velocity to do what? Zero because the initial distance is this much of the final distance. So when you subtract the two values, you will get zero divided by the change in time, okay, which is what the time interval that it took for, for the displacement to okay, okay. But here's the case that there was no displacement because the particle was what is at rest. So we will have a displacement over the change in time. Okay, time will still be measured, but displacement what will be zero since the object didn't move. So then we will have what the zero over what the change in time. And that gives us what velocity to be what, to be zero because the change in time you are going to get a value and you know zero divided by any number is what zero. So when a particle is at rest, we see that the velocity is what is zero. So we are going to use this equation here to calculate for the time when the particle is at what. It's at rest. So you know that when a particle is at rest, velocity is what zero. So we're going to have what zero equals 12 t minus what 3 t squared. Okay, I'm going to write this. This will be rewritten as minus 3 t squared plus 12 t equals zero. Okay, so what I'll do is that I'll factor the minus 3 t okay because it's common to both terms. So that what Minus 3t is bracket t, okay, minus what? 4. This will be equal to what? 0. So I'll factor it out. So I'll have what? Minus 3t equals 0, and then t minus 4 equals what? 0. So I'll have t to be equal to 0 seconds, and then t to be equal to 4 seconds. So when at time t equals what? 0 seconds. The particle will be at rest and also at time t equals 4 seconds, the particle will be at rest. That's all for this video. Thank you very much for watching.